Um, right, so I'm, yeah, I'm Sarah Helen, uh, and uh, I, my background is in menswear design through um, industry and throughout my BA and MA. Um, I'm currently an associate lecturer at Man in Manchester, um, and I'm going to be talking to you today a lot about my research and what has now kind of turned into uh, curating work. But it's funny, I was just saying um, over lunch to a couple of the other speakers, I was like, God, I don't know if I'm really, if I really kind of fit this bill. I was thinking, am I, am I, am I okay to talk about sustainability? And I start, what are those self-doubt moments? You start to think, am I in the right place? But then I, something, somebody said something that kind of made me think. I think it was Sarah. She said, what we kind of need to do is um, promote curiosity. And I think from what I'm trying to say is hopefully from explaining to you my kind of my research um, throughout my degrees and my practice and my industry work and what I'm doing now, hopefully it'll kind of just make you think or maybe open a window of kind of uh, opportunity for other influences of things that are perhaps a bit closer to home than you might think. Um, so, yeah, we'll see as we go along, but hopefully I am in the right place. <laughs> um, so, I'm mostly going to talk to you about Wales, so I need to kind of put out a bit of a disclaimer that although I am the least Welsh-sounding Welsh person you will ever meet, for that I make up with it for it in kind of uh, patriotism and uh, my love for Wales. But I am Welsh, I was born in uh, the highest village in Wales, Bufgwyn, uh, a, a place with no vowels, and um, I have been back there, well, in that area for a year now, so I'm kind of fully uh, in back in kind of Wales form, but yeah, just to let you know I am Welsh, so uh, before you think, what is she going on about, and why, why the obsession, because I have been asked that before, why are you so obsessed with Wales, I don't get it, and I'm like, no, I, honestly, I'm from there, it's just, uh, and I'm going to my first Welsh lesson on the weekend, so, you know, I'm trying. So when you think of Wales, you think sheep, daffodils, you think rugby, etc. You might think Tom Jones. And you know what? All of those things are absolutely true. And I absolutely love that. And that's what I've grown up around. It's funny, I wrote something the other day about how much I love Wales. And um, I was saying it's kind of the little things. And I love all these kind of silly stereotypes and I love that there is a bit of a sense of humour towards Wales that you know you can take the mick a little bit you know Gavin and Stacey is probably your best kind of example of that and people do wear whole bunches of daffodils or an actual leak on their jumper on the 1st of March and it's just funny so I love Wales and I oh let me backtrack a tiny bit so my BA and MA design I did fashion design as you guys are doing and um, I loved my MA really really got stuck into it and it was coming up to kind of that uh, final major project time and I remember we had our kind of introduction to it and we had this kind of chat about what is our cultural identity and I remember afterwards kind of going and almost bitching about it to my friend we were both like I just don't oh I just don't know what to do I was like I'm from North Wales it's just like what, 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 what am I going to do from that? And then I just, then I was just like, God, I'm such an idiot. I, then I just thought, right, actually, I've grown up and been surrounded by a plethora of ideas and inspiration that I hadn't really considered in that way before. So what I'm going to tell you, show you, is how I kind of used my own, cult I, well, I realised my own cultural identity and then used it to form a brand and now form what I'm working on now. So when I said to my tutor, I was like, right, I've got a great idea for my final major project. I was like, I'm going to do it all about Wales. And he just looked at me and was like, right, you've got to make it cool, Sarah. And that is because of all the things that I just mentioned. You know, you just think he was just like, because it was men, I do menswear, uh, you know, fashion. And he was, you know, all very kind of fashion avant-garde. I'm like Wales, he just thinks of kind of all humble twee. And I was like, no, no, won't be twee. Let's, you know, let's not go. So then that was my ammunition then. That was my, right, I'm going to make it cool. And then I'm a self-confessed absolute research nerd. I love researching. And I really stuck my teeth into Wales, all aspects of Wales. Looked at tradition, heritage, craftsmanship, rural skills, local resources, makers, uh, handmade products. And this 
yeah, I just kind of just got enveloped in a world of these things that, as I say, I grew up around and perhaps didn't appreciate until much af- much later. Like, I'm a country girl at heart completely, and I grew up in the sticks, you know, so I was surrounded by these things. But it was only really when I started to look into it, I thought these would be a great source of inspiration for my work. And my key aim is to make all of those things contemporary. So that was my kind of, that was my key my, my goal, make it contemporary and cool, you know, cool, whatever you say is cool. So, research. Um, I love this photo. Uh, it's of uh, Martin Parr. Um, actually, I always find that Martin Parr always co- comes into my initial research at some stage. I love people. I love communities. I love how this does represent, this happens, you know, this, people still go to concerts like that. I went to a pantomime the other day that my mum was musical director of at the, in the community and it was just so like heartwarmingly like real and I just so I started looking <laughs> at people's p- portrayals of Wales pe- what do, you know and all kind of different characteristics so just a you know a real broad mix of everywhere uh, that you guys will also be interested like uh, researching but I just really really got stuck into every part of Wales and then but I I'm someone that needs to talk to people and that's why I liked um, Sarah's comment earlier about the cu- uh, inspiring that like, curiosity and because I just love asking questions so I thought right people and I started to think about who I could go and meet and perhaps form collaborations with so then I started um, and what I should say is a big part of my focus was looking at traditional crafts and crafts that are still alive in Wales today, but perhaps practiced in a kind of um, much smaller cottage industry style business, people that don't necessarily advertise. Um, So that made my research just that bit more kind of interesting and intriguing. And I went to country shows and, you know, picked up all the local newspapers and, you know, searched through endless arts and crafts websites and went to meet people and it's all very word of mouth because you know Wales is big but small community you know people if you go and see someone that does something they tell you about someone else and I've just started creating this small network of people all working in traditional crafts and um, it just really really built my kind of intrigue and I was thinking like how can I use all of these age-old skills handmade skills and um, and contemporize them into a kind of uh, modern menswear. So this is Becca, um, and she works a lot with copper. She's a knitter as well, so we've worked together on a couple of things. But she works a lot with copper, and I was like, right, so how can I incorporate this into my design? Then we made zip pulls, and we made some kind of little Welsh emblems as a little fun thing. And, you know, so then I had all copper details. I'll show you pictures of my kind of collection afterwards. Um, this is Mary. She's a basket maker living in Powys. Um, most of her um, bas- her willow is kind of is UK sourced. Wales, if possible, again enhancing that feel of localness. Basketry is a, is a, well interestingly about basket weaving is it's yet to be computerized. It's a hand. It's only possible to make a basket by hand, and I think that's there's something really special in that. So I met her at, um, at a wool show called Wonder Wool, which was a fantastic part of my research, where they actually have a sheep walk um, <laughs> rather than a cat walk, which I find amusing. But do you know what? I went to this thing, open mind, and I met some amazing people like Mary there. And I was like, I've got this idea. You might think it's stupid, but I'd like to make some accessories out of basketry. And she was like, yeah, cool, why not? So we formed a working relationship and we made some products together. Um, this is Denise. Uh, she um, designed a cloth at um, a woolen mill, Melon Tivy, and uh, ended up sponsoring me with this cloth, um, which is a contemporary design on a, which again you'll see in a second, contemporary design on a very traditional Welsh heritage um, double weave cloth. So Welsh woolen mills I have absolutely fallen in love with and really hope to continue my kind of Further, further my like, academic research into the subject, but that's a whole other thing. Um, the Welsh woollen mill weaving industry was um, a huge, huge part of uh, industry in Wales in like the 16th century, and there used to be, there was hundreds, I think up to 400 mills all over the country, which is a small country. And um, 
now there's just less than 10 working and they're still working producing like most beautiful cloth um, and they're just the most this one um, mill, Mel in Tyvee, run by a family, a guy called Raymond heads it up. You can barely contact him via email, you know, he, you'll be wait, you won't get a, a reply because his internet's been down, but your fabric's ready, so you can't, you know, there's all these kind of humbling kind of business, frustrating, but, I don't know, really old school way of working. And these machines have never been computerised. They're... Uh, completely non-digital and there's something really beautiful about that. So I was sponsored a fabric woven in Wales which was um, um, became like iconic part of my collection. Um, I also sourced local wool so this is Christine um, she has Angora goats um, so looking at local produce wool um, I can just oh, sorry it's not here but what she was saying about uh, wool, I'm completely in agreement. Fantastic fibre if you get the chance to work with it. 100% go for it. And there's so many cool technologies going on with wool at the moment. Um, but it's renewable, it's, uh, you know, it's sustainable, it's, and it's just great. And being in Wales, there is a lot of it because there are lots of sheep. Um, yet it's only recently been... Um, there's only recently been a... Um, Welsh wool created in a kind of, um, in the, what's the word? Uh, it's been made so that it can be woven and knit to an industry standard. They've only just been able to gather a fully Welsh wool, which is really exciting, um, as it's such because of the kind of climate of Wales and the mountains that the sheep live on, and perhaps how they looked after, and then thinking that they're not, you know, they're not merino sheep living in New Zealand. They're up on a mountain and treacherous, you know, conditions. So lots of Traditionally, lots of Welsh wool has always gone into carpets. So, you know, it's a kind of a, a small victory, really, that Wales has produced its fully 100% Welsh sourced wool um, to be made at an industry standard. So that is something I would like to work with in the future. Um, so I built up a network of collaborators and I started working on designs with them. Um, and I was really kind of getting involved in this like heavy heritage, traditional, you know, slant on what I'm doing. But I as much as I love it, I always need to have something which is a little kind of fun bit to kind of, you know, lighten the mood. So I looked for a trend concept, design concept inspiration from my local town of Wrexham, where they, you will be greeted by, all right, La? And uh, so I just started, again, researching into my local area. Um, I started gathering stories to my um, great surprise, my dad had a whole box of story of um, newspaper cuttings that he'd kept, um, which were perfect. And then they informed all the kind of illustrations that I um, worked with an illustrator to do, um, which formed the kind of uh, the brand, you know, the icon. So there was a, the police were called because there was a, a pound shop that had a half price sale. And this, this made like front page news in Wrexham. It was amazing. <laughs> There was other things, um, some people were doing like a charity marathon, they ended up running further than they thought they had because somebody moved the sign. Um, I haven't put this on there, but there's this like, there's a story that everyone in Wrexham knows and it's about this guy who took his horse on a train and there's like YouTube footage of him taking his pony in the lift so it can go over the top of the thing, it's just mental. And it's just these things that I love, like I love. And I've recently moved back to Wrexham and it hasn't changed whatsoever, but that's what I love about it. So I had a bit of fun with it as well. And then, so from it, this is my collection. I worked with knitwear. You can see I changed the All Right La logo. You can see um, as I go along. So this is traditional Welsh, uh, this is a traditional Welsh weave, style of weave, a basket weave. This is the basket I was telling you about that I worked with uh, Mary to create. Two more baskets, the most impractical gym bag that you'll ever have, but it's more of a, the, it's the concept, really. Um, I had Welsh wool hand-knitted socks by a group of ladies from my mum's village. Um, what else is in there? This is the cloth that I was sponsored by, so I don't know if anybody's kind of familiar at all with uh, traditional Welsh uh, patterns. I, perhaps not, but actually... Oh, Scott, this is an example. I should be wearing it, really. But this is a very kind of traditional Welsh pattern, and this was a, um, a contemporary kind of design based on it. But this is still a very kind of, like, 
icon icon of like national design in Wales really and it, it will never really die out I don't think. Um, I also had slate buttons, they were handmade by a guy in Bainife Stinyog in Snowdonia, um, you can't really see them but they were beautiful. Um, and I'm just going to show you a short video, if I may, of just some of the kind of the details. I don't know if there's any sound. But... Oh, yeah. So hopefully you can see, there's one of the slate buttons. So really it was just about trying to incorporate all these kind of traditional elements and using as many natural resources as I can into a kind of contemporary um, collection. But also as a way of just kind of representing these kind of handmade methods that are still being practiced. You know, I used a quilting machine to reflect, uh, like a hand-drawn quilter to kind of to draw my characters from the stories, and that reflected. There's a huge quilt tradition in um, Wales as well. So everything it's just kind of little hints. Uh, Melon Tivy, sorry, one of those mills that I that also wove the um, the blanket fabric. It. Uh, they're famous for their flannel, so I use their flannel. Uh, but it's just, there's, their flannel is gorgeous, it's amazing, but it's just not great next to the skin, you know? It's, it's wool, it's harsh, it's... But there's, you know, there's, there's ways of kind of getting around it, and I've worked with it since, but... Um, this is my collection in whole. Oh, can I go full screen? Yeah. Oh, too big. Um, Um, yeah, so again, that was all Welsh wool from that lady Christine you saw in the middle there. Some of that is punched wool fibre that actually I had from my uncle's farm. Also helps that he's a sheep farmer, so plenty of wool. And there we go. So I continue to do collections. This is a spring collection I did after that where um, I built, I, again, my kind of fun element. There's actually a club called the Dull Men's Club, and it's a real club of dull men. And I actually <laughs> bought... They're self-confessed dull men, don't worry, it's not me just being me and rude, but um, I actually bought, picked up a calendar and I just thought it's quite funny, it was, it was a, a dull man for each, each month of the year, and um, so I used that, I got, I got to know the, uh, the, the, uh, the chairman of the dull men club quite well through it, because you know, I went, I don't like to just kind of, I don't want this to be a mickey take, I, you know, I went whole hog, I went to meet the guy that's made this thing and he was like, I was like, can I make a collection about you and your team? He was like, yeah, 100%. So I, um, I, uh, he, that's him actually, there. He was in my lookbook, so that was fun. But again, trying to reflect all different, uh, this, this was a, I think this was a Welsh flannel, the grey. Um, again, used the quilting machine, uh, knitwear. This was a hand knit by the lady you saw earlier, um, uh, Becca. Um, I also, I'll tell you about my friend the shoemaker later, but he, uh, he's amazing. I'll tell you a little bit about him. So I had handmade shoes from Wales. There's an amazing knitwear factory called Corgi in, um, you might recognise them with their socks. Uh, they did some knitwear for me again with the slate buttons. I had hand painted silk scarves. Um, so again, just trying to like contemporise these, um, you know, traditional methods and trying to just source as many things locally as I can. Um, and I did make a short film where we met the makers. So I'm just going to show you that because it's in relation to this. Um, I think it's going to be loud. Oh, do I get sound? Can I turn the sound up? Anyway? Oh, it doesn't really work with that sound. <laughs> into um, my kind of uh, process. Um, so what... Oh, 
so technical. Wait a second. Full screen mode. Okay, so I also went on to do my first, next collection, which again was working with all local materials. Again, featuring the basket, um, using uh, wool. Again, wool can just be made into so many beautiful textures. And I literally kind of made it in my washing machine almost. Like it's real kind of, it's always looking at these kind of really crafty techniques and just like, yeah, making them cool. So again, working or working locally. And I've shot this in, um, it's called the Horseshoe Pass. And it's just like, it's around where I live. And it's just my most favourite place on earth. I love it. Um, these are just a couple of little bits of inspiration. This collection was inspired by a, uh, he's a Welsh artist, Cuffin Williams, an amazing kind of portraiture. So, yeah, just so you can kind of get a feel of where I'm coming from. Um, so, in kind of, con so I did three seasons of this menswear brand and took it to various trade shows. And these were kind of my main values. And it was all about kind of collaborating, um, you know, realising the importance of traditional craft. And, but what I really enjoyed from it was that I was like collecting like a community of makers. And as I said, I love to meet people. I love to kind of ask questions. I'm really annoying, I guess. But I think that's what you have to do. I think it's just being curious. And then also I had no idea really when I thought, right, I'm going to do my project on Wales, that I would find out so much stuff about Wales that now I'm really working to kind of promote. So these are kind of my real uh, kind of key values. And then I worked in the in menswear industry for a few years at both Top Man and Oliver Spencer. And it's funny that um, I think it was Zoe said earlier how she did a design degree and then realised she's totally disengaged with the fashion industry. And I can totally relate to that um, because I feel like a fraud calling myself a designer anymore because I, I design in different ways, but not necessarily the kind of classic way that I was taught to. But all of that research and all of that knowledge that I built throughout the kind of, this is a picture of the Oliver Spence collection I worked in, but all of that kind of knowledge and interest and in, um, yeah, everything that I learned through those years, I realised what I was really passionate about and what really got me going and what I could really like continue. And like none of this was really available in an industry scale. I couldn't work with those, that locality, that feeling of like locality or even like you can't, although Oliver Spencer like really strives to be a kind of British manufactured brand, it's totally impossible, you know. So all of these things and I was always the one trying to push that we do this and slightly, you know, reduce a bit here and organic cottons and but it was all very price focused and as you can imagine, Top Man is just a whole other game of fast fashion so yeah my mind was all a bit kind of uh, all over the place so I moved home <laughs> from London to Llangollen which at first was a complete shock but actually when I think about it totally the right decision and all of my friends think that it's much better for me I'm in that place that I love you know so now I'm kind of using I, I almost so I'm working on a project now that uh, called journal um, and it's basically building on all of the research and connections that I made throughout my kind of MA research and then throughout my brand. And because what I really, really enjoyed was connecting makers together, um, like inspiring creatives and just being a platform, as it says there, for makers and creatives in Wales and to just kind of promote the message um, that there are loads of amazing traditional crafts being made in our local area with, re with um, local resources. Um, and there's so many independent businesses. So in just as even if just a small way, I can kind of, you know, present these people and their stories and their work and products to a kind of wider audience outside of Wales. Then I'll be kind of doing what I want to do, if you know what I mean. So, uh, so really, this is my kind of manifesto as such. Um, and I've been kind of just working on this for like the last year, maybe six months, like more so. And um, it's really starting to gauge some interest. I'm all about just kind of sharing stories and um, I'm just meeting people. And like Jenny, who I met, who's amazing, she makes up to 3,000 pots by hand in her tiny, like, back room in her amazing house. And just, you know, there's such gems. And this is her neighbour, who is a whittler, and he makes amazing wooden spoons and products. Um, 
Cassie there uh, is a basket maker. Um, she actually made something for one of my collections a while ago, and she's um, she's a great example of kind of like a sustainable. Uh, so she lives in an eco village in Pembrokeshire, and um, they were allowed the land um, and the kind of premise that in two years' time, they'd be 70% self-sufficient. And she is, and she grows her own willow, and that's her industry. Um, she teaches, she sells products, and they've built their own houses. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw the um, the Hobbit house on design, on Grand Designs. It's That's her next door neighbour, basically. That, it's in that kind of field. But you just meet the... I, what I'm loving is I meet these amazing characters, and you learn so much from each. So I've taken all little snippets of things that I've met from people. This is Will, he works with leather. And this is Alan, who makes his own shoes. And he is just incredible. He's become a great friend of mine. And um, I go and visit me, uh, visit him, and he, um, he's made me some shandles, which are shoes and sandals. Um, but they've got amazing orthopedic properties. And he, uh, he again, has just lived, uh, lives such a quiet kind of lifestyle on the side of the West Wales, couldn't be any closer to the sea if you tried, and it's just beautiful and really makes you stop and think, and his process is so, he's all self-taught. He used to live in London, he was in the advertising world and moved into rural Wales and taught himself a craft, and he makes a living from it, and, you know, more than that, and he loves it, and he's just held an exhibition, actually, which was 40 years of Shandles, which is just so insanely impressive um, so he's a real kind of inspiration as to why I'm kind of doing all of this and as I say um, again just highlighting the kind of importance and the role of the kind of Welsh weaving industry has kind of had in my research that they're just incredible places and the real icons of like traditional craft that's just still going this this is where this cloth is made actually Melon Tregwint probably one of the more advanced or the most advanced mill in Wales and they're just um, producing just the most beautiful cloth and it's such a thriving industry but yet is somewhat kind of under the radar slightly but it's a real kind of um, I don't even know if people recognize it maybe I'm in my little Welsh bubble but you know you do yeah, it's and mm. um, so part of journal I'm creating a directory of makers and aim to kind of promote people's stories and therefore pass on um, you know, links and things. I'm also kind of doing a monthly newsletter where I'm just kind of reaching out to all creatives across Wales and people are contributing different posts for me now, which is great. Um, and so this has really turned into a, it's really a funny journey from kind of design to almost curation as such. And I represented 14 different makers at um, a festival that's all focused on kind of um, living the good life, which is, you know, Use local resources, local food, uh, local drink, like everything, just supporting your local area and kind of enjoying it. And next, this year, I'll be doing a whole tent of Welsh craft. I'm also putting on certain events, getting like guest speakers, similar to a small, a much smaller version of this upstairs in a pub, um, just to kind of promote that kind of creative, again, local. Uh, message that I'm trying to get from and this is really just my kind of values through journal um, and um, yeah so it, as I say it's a funny kind of oh this is my my end that means Wales forever and that is I do you know what it really sums up my this is a Welsh male voice choir that I got to dress up into my collection we made a really nice video in my brother-in-law's pub and like it's completely unstaged except for their clothing obviously but like you know that's what I love about Wales there is Welsh bunting in my brother-in-law's <laughs> pub and I used to think it was dead nap and now I love it <laughs> but um I just think in such a small area there's so many amazing things going on and that really is I feel like that's my kind of little bugbear I want to be able to promote that but I think it's through meeting people and through research and researching in the places that perhaps you don't think that you'll find anything is when you'll discover these little pots of gold. Like, so, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what my kind of overall <laughs> message is really, but um, this is where I'm at now, so <laughs> there we go. Thank you.